It's an unstoppable day, family. Hey, it's Terrence, the unstoppable Coach Leffridge, and you are tuning in to another episode of the Next Level Living Show with Coach Terrence, where we talk to ordinary people doing extraordinary things to live their life on the next level. So glad that you could be with us for another episode. We've got another powerful guest on the Next Level Living Show tonight. And you know, like I know, that Every time we come together, we're gonna motivate you to the next level of your greatness by telling you stories of how someone has overcome their challenges, how they've overcome any trials or tribulations, and they have moved to the next level of their greatness. And now they're giving back. They're giving back to their families. They're giving back to their businesses. They're giving back to their communities. And tonight, they're giving back to you because there is some young person out there. There's some young adult out there. There's some person in transition right now and you don't know what you don't know. And you don't know what it is gonna take to get to the next level of your greatness. And it's my sincere desire that after this show, you will hear something that will move you in the direction that you need to go so that you can live your life. Come on, real quick, hurry up greatness as well so we want to be able to encourage you in and learn white type i need you to run with it special guest so tonight we want you to do a couple of housekeeping things as we prepare for our guests tonight we want you to take a couple of minutes and do a couple of things if you look above your head we've got couple of icons. We've got the Facebook icon. We've got the Twitter icon. We've got the LinkedIn. We've got Google Plus, and we've got Pinterest. Every one of the social media outlets is interactive on the Next Level Living Show, and we want you to join in with us. So go ahead and click on one of those links. Like it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, talk about it on Google Plus, and yes, even invite your business friends in on LinkedIn. Let them know that the Next Level Living Show with Coach Terrence is on the air right now. It's been a fun field 2016 so far. We've had some exciting guests on the show who have been able to motivate you. We've had women who have uh, talked to you about love. We've had men who have talked to you about the cure to, to becoming average. Uh, I have talked to you about living your life on the next level. And tonight we're gonna talk to you about why there's no reason you can't win in the end if you put some steps together that's gonna help you overcome average, move to the next level of your greatness. And as we enter the uh, Black History Month here in February, 29 days to celebrate everything that is happening in Black America, we want to really talk to the youth today. We wanna to talk to the, the young men and even some of the young women that are growing up in these difficult days that we have right now in the world. And some of them are lost. Some of them are hopeless. Some of them don't even believe that they're gonna see another day. And it's our responsibility as mentors, as adults, as the generation that is ahead of this generation to give them hope, to give them motivation, and to give them inspiration. And this brother that we've got on the show here tonight is one of those brothers that is putting in the work, who is working in the fields, who is putting in the labor and is reaping the harvest by working with the, men, the young men and women in urban America today. He is the founder and the director of Building Better Men out of Detroit, Michigan. He is a powerful motivational speaker. He is a powerful uh, leader. He is a genuine brother that is doing the work that needs to be done. I'm so glad to have met him uh, over a year ago, and we have been conversating with each other online and offline throughout the course of that time. And I'm so glad that we finally have been able to find time to get him 
on the Next Level Living Show in his busy schedule that has him traveling the world, traveling the country, traveling within his community, helping build better men. So without further ado, I want to introduce to some and reintroduce to others my friend, Mr. Otis Bellinger. Otis, are you on the broadcast? Oh, man, what's up? Unstoppable Terrence Leftridge. Your boy is on the show from Detroit. What up, though? That's how we say it in Detroit. That means I'm glad to be here, brother. What up, though, Otis? You know it's been a long time coming getting you on the Next Level Living Show, so I am so glad that we could crack into your schedule to have you on the Next Level Living Show with Coach Terrence. It is extremely an honor, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little jealous that I was able to pull you away from the important work that you're doing in Detroit. But, you know, I'm glad that you'll spend a little time with our audience and share some of the things that you're doing, not only in the city of Detroit, state of Michigan, but across the country and soon across the world. So, so thank you so much for being being a part of the show this evening. Man, I'm humbled to be here, brother. And you know, <laughs> uh, listen, I'm just glad I got an invite. I didn't know that I was going to make your list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad I got an invite, brother. Hey, well, you know what? Let's, let's jump right on into it. So two things that I always ask every guest that is coming into the Next Level Living show. And for those of you who are out there, go ahead and click those links above us, the Facebook, the Twitter, the LinkedIn, the Google+, and the Pinterest link, and let somebody know that the one, the only, Otis Bellinger is finally on the Next Level Living Show, and he's about to drop some powerful nuggets for you. And uh, you can go to bit.ly forward slash Next Level Living Live. Tell all your friends to go to bit.ly forward slash Next Level Living Live, and you can join right in to the conversation. And if you guys look below, you'll see this let the, the words click here. If you click there, that's going to send you over to the Next Level Living Show Facebook page where I want you to go in and log in, give us your name, where you're from, and if you've got a business or ministry that you want to shout out on the Next Level Living Show, that's the place to put it. And we'll be so glad to shout you out and let Otis know that you are, are, are really blessing him this evening. So Otis, the two questions I want to ask you, number one, what does it mean to you to be living life on the next level? And then number two, give the people a little bit more information about yourself, if you wouldn't mind, okay? All right, Otis, check your check check your microphone. I can we can't we can't hear you. Check your microphone. We can't hear you. It's 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 low. Maybe something's with is un, is uh, is is your volume on your actual cord down? You were just fine a minute ago. So check check the cord, check the wire, check your volume on your laptop. This is live TV, everybody. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes the technology gets the best of us. I say the devil's trying to get busy, trying to stop Otis from giving this powerful message, but we are going to push right on through. Mic check, mic check. Can, I can't, can you hear me? I can't hear you. If you can hear me, shake your head. Okay, I can't hear you. Here, try unplugging, unplug the headset all together, and let's just hear you from um, from the room. Okay, now check the speakers on your laptop, because I can't hear you. You might, you have to go to your, you might have to go to your settings, Otis. Go to your settings on your laptop and see if the volume is is muted or not muted. Okay, so do this. Just, just log out and log back in, and we'll just keep going until you get back here, okay? 
So you might it might have been something that you touched that set the settings off. So log out and log back in. So Otis is the is the author of the book No Reason Why You Can't Win: Seven Steps to Promote the success of young African-American males. It is a powerful book. It is a book that is full of great nuggets to help promote the success of young men. And that is definitely needed in 2016. You know, uh, as, we're so, as we are celebrating Black History Month, you know, I always look for some powerful quotes. And one of the quotes, of course, comes from who else but Dr. Martin Luther King, where he says that in that famous I Have a Dream speech that he wanted our children not to be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. And we know things have gotten a little bit better in 2016, but far too often we hear stories even today of where kids are being shot down in the streets because of the color of their skin, well before anyone asks them about their content well before anyone judges their character. Many times we are being judged before we even have a conversation. Many times our children are being taken away from us for senseless reasons, only because of that fear that has been perpetuated by the media and by the community of us being something that all of us are not. You know, that one bad apple just spoils the whole barrel mentality that some of our police departments across the country, some of our government entities across the country, some of our, our, our parents across the country really has taken a toll on our youth. And today, as, as Otis will tell you when he gets back on the connection, he'll tell you that our, our youth, especially our black men, have a sense of hopelessness like never before. I, I, I submit to you that their hopelessness is even more dire than before when our generations before us was in slavery. And we've got to do everything in our power right now to make a difference in the lives of our, our youth because they are our hope for the future. And in his book, No Reason Why You Can't Win, he talks to the youth about accountability. He talks to the youth about having an in spite of attitude. And if you are, mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Can you hear me, brother? Yes, we can hear you now, Otis. Yes, indeed. Man, I apologize for the, for the technical difficulties, man, but I'm back on track, brother. Not a problem. As, as, as I was telling the audience while we were waiting for you to come back, the devil is a lie. And oh, he's, no not, he's not going to stop you from getting this powerful message. I was going into a little bit of a, a background regarding your book, No Reason Why, but let's jump right in. Let's, let's turn the floor over to you. Again, those two questions were, what does it mean to you to be living your life on the next level? And then tell the people a little bit more about Otis Bellinger. Well, you know, I'm to the point now, man, where, where God has gifted us. And I tell folks all the time, if God made us in his own image, God didn't make no junk. If a person, if a human say they junk, it's not God's fault. <laughs> he ain't make no junk, man. So he put us on this earth to go to higher levels, man. I mean, you know, we are not the same people that we will be tomorrow, the next day. So brother, you know, right now we are made to go to the next level. We're made to be unstoppable. The only thing that's stopping us is us. So when you say next level, I live that every day, brother. I get up early in the morning and I sit up and I say, what is it that I'm going to do to make a difference? And I take inventory of myself every three days. I say, hey, what is it that I can do without what is it that I can add? And what is it that I should have never got my uh, African-American self into? <laughs> <laughs> so, man, we all try to get to the next level, brother. So, you know, hey, hey, that's a big piece, man. What was that second question? So tell the people a little bit about ODB, Otis Bellinger, to doing great things out there in Detroit, Michigan. Tell us a little bit more that I haven't told. Well, you know, um, man, 
I started a uh, mentoring program 25 years ago. That's our 25th year. And basically, all that I wanted to do was be able to help somebody, man. You know, if my father walked into the room right now, I wouldn't know him. And I know how that feels. I know that hurt. I know that pain. And I told myself, if I ever got out of my neighborhood, Dexter Davidson in Detroit, which is off the hook, if I ever got out of that neighborhood, I do not want any young man to feel the way I feel. And I know that 99% of the issues plaguing the black community is fatherlessness, man. So I told myself a long time ago, fatherlessness sucks. I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy, man. So I, I just began doing stuff in my neighborhood. Then from there, I started doing it in the schools. And then I started studying. And you know what? I'm going to tell you straight up, Brother Leftwich, my mother used to send me to a lot of doctors to try to figure out what's going on with this boy. And you know what? <laughs> and you know what? After they couldn't figure it out, I said, Mama, I'm going to figure it out myself. So, you know, I began studying myself. I began studying, man, why, why do I do what I do? And what I learned is this. No human was meant to be 50%, which means no human was meant to only know 50% of themselves. 50% in any school district in the world is a failing grade. And I told myself, although I didn't know the other 50%, I was introduced to the father that would never leave us, the father that would never forsake us, the father that would be there forever. And, you know, that's Jesus Christ. And it's hard to sell that to a young man who who has not bought into that this is the only way of the world. So, man, you know, I mean, so I told myself I'm going to do whatever I can to help young men know that every piece of real estate that they step their feet on is valuable, man. And see, the thing about it, right now, every every Monday in 2016, oh, over at the Matrix Center, in which I'm the assistant director of in the city of Detroit, we're in a, we're in a poor zip code in the state of Michigan, 48205. Anybody in Detroit know about that? Every Monday... We have what's called It's Possible Mondays, where we bring people in every Monday in 2016, and it's real simple. We don't want no PowerPoints. You don't need no handouts. All we want is 30 minutes of you to let some of the kids, the poorest kids in Detroit, to come from the most desolate area in the state of Michigan and let them know just two words that it's possible for you to succeed despite any socioeconomic level you come from. And see, the thing about it, we are selling these kids all these programs, all these books, all these, all this national, my brother's keeper, nothing is wrong with that. But you can sell somebody everything, but unless they feel that your product, unless they feel that it's possible for them to get to where the very place that the person is saying you can do it, if they don't believe it's possible, man, that stuff not going to matter. So you know I, what? Hey, it's I not going to matter. I, I hear you. And, and you know what? That That is a great way to, to really start exp telling us your story. Because there was at some point in Otis's life that he had to recognize that was it was possible. And uh, you you and I share a, a common thread that uh, as we go through this conversation, we're going to learn more and more about because I, too, was uh, raised without a father. Uh, my father passed away when I was just a little baby. I wasn't even one years old, so I never got a chance to call him daddy. I never had a chance to to bend his ear. I never had a chance to to really be reared by him. So I, I understand what it's like to to not uh, be raised or, and to not have your father in the home. But when was that point? that Otis recognized that it was possible in his own life. Man, you know, I can remember at age 12, almost every day up until age 12, I cried. And then I remember being at a store in Detroit. Most of us know what Farmer Jack is in Detroit, if you're in the area. And I stole a pack of big red gum. i never forget. The security guard came and got me, and he said, you know what, I'm not going to call your mother because your mother got the type of job that if she leave that job, she doesn't have any vacation pay or whatever. She lose her job. Right. And, that, 
And that means that you and your little brother are going to suffer because your dumb buddy here is stealing a pack of gum. So he said, you know what? He looked at me and he said, let me tell you something. I'll never forget this. He said, you know, you got to act as if your daddy not ever going to come back. And that was hard for a 12 year old. Mm -hmm. And he said, you've been, you've been crying all the way up to age 12. Now you need to change the direction of your life. And you know what? You got to man up and listen, try to help somebody else. Help somebody else. And so and that's so what, that's what, that's what made that's me what say. Made me say. So we got somebody else that's come in. We uh, got Katoya Campbell that's come in on the live line. So we're going to ask Katoya if she'll just mute her mic and uh, turn off her camera so we don't have the feedback so Brother Otis can continue to talk. All right. Go ahead, Otis, right now. Mute your, mute your, your, uh, mute your microphone as well, Katoya. Go ahead, Otis. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, we. I can hear you fine. Okay, so what has happened? You can hear me. Keep on going, Otis. We hear you fine. Okay, so what has happened is that, you know. I just had to tell myself, Brother Terrence, that I cry every day up to I was age 12. So now I got to change direction and I got to act like that the very part of me that I don't know would never exist. And that was hard on a brother, man. So, you know, and that made me say that the best therapy is helping somebody else. So that's when it was birthed that I knew that for the rest of my life, with every bone and fiber in my body, that I would be spent with the development of young African-American males. Wow. And, and you know, that that's that's great that you were able to, to, to figure out your calling when you were just 12 years old. So, But I submit to you that you probably are light years ahead of the game of some of our youth that are out there right now. I know I used to work in um, the, the, the youth here in Cook County. I used to work at our uh, public guardian's office. We were advocates for uh, kids in foster care and we would help them uh, get reunified with their family or we would help get them into good foster homes or good independent living programs for those teenagers that were aging out of the system. And it always hurt my heart because I would hear their conversation amongst each other. And, and especially the men, Otis, especially the young men, they were, they didn't expect to live past 17 or 18. So they were just living life for the right now because they didn't think anything was promised to them. They didn't think they had a future so they definitely weren't thinking about what their purpose was in life. They were just thinking about how they were going to make it through that day. And I know if I see that here in Cook County, you probably see that in Detroit as well. Is, is that true? Oh, no doubt, because a lot of them uh, think that they have nothing to live for. But uh, I used to be a clinical director of a maximum security juvenile correctional facility for young men ages 8 to 18, and it's almost like they took what they did in the community, and actually criminal activity is the, the most severe form of bullying. You're just bullying on a communal piece, and it was almost like, Ballinger, we feel the world owes us something. We were born into this family. We were born into this community. We got all this Ain't all this inconsistent parenting. So you know what? We can really take it out on the world in the form of criminal activity. And it was something, man. I mean, they actually had a rationale as to why they were carjacking, why they were killing, why they were uh, 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 denigrating the community. And so with that, it was almost like we're basically living day to day on a death wish. Wow. Yeah. So if you're dealing with, with, with young men who are 
who are upset because their sense of entitlement hasn't been satisfied. If you're dealing with young men who are angry because of their situation, if you're dealing with young men who are taking out their anger on the world and causing more um, devastation, not only on their community, but to themselves, how, what is the answer that you've come up with with building better men? Well, the formula we have is one, is that we believe that early funeral home processions and prisons are not for black males. You All need right. to, you need to put yourself in one of three categories: colleges, skilled trade schools, entrepreneurship. If you put yourself in those three categories and negate the other two, you know, that means that you will at least begin to create a blueprint where you can take care of yourself, have some dignity, and if the Lord bless you with a, with a family, to be able to take care of your family. You know? So tell us some of the things that Building Better Men does on a daily best basis to achieve those goals, and then we're gonna get into some of the principles that you have in your book. Well, we have school-based programs, community-based programs. You know, the piece says, uh, Brother Left, which is that, our programs, we've been around 25 years. We've never received any big funding or anything. We didn't have a lot of big names. We just had big hearts. And like most of the people that help us are those who have bought into the system because we have a lot of young men who have benefited from the program, who are doing very well. So, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, our formula is to bring back those who have bought into what we call the B2M system. See, once you, unlike a lot of other mentoring programs, once you join our program, you're in it for life. We don't stop. We don't have an expiration date. And you know what? We're not, if we don't get a grant, we don't exist. No. I mean, we operate on a zero budget. We operate on a zero budget and a millionaire uh, 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 a zero budget and an actual millionaire caring mindset. Okay. We don't have no money. We don't got big names. We just got big hearts. So once you come into our program, we have a male literacy program that we partner with Judge Greg Mathis at his center in Detroit, where we talk to the kids about being better students, uh, learning to read, comprehending your lessons. I mean, we have the male responsibility program where we talk about the tenets of what a man is supposed to do, what a young man is supposed to do, because we don't know it. I did not know it. So, and then we have the entrepreneurship piece where we take young men and on the weekends, have them find out what is your uh, uh, career track. And then we put them with men who have achieved so that they can at least get an idea of what to expect. Wow, that's fabulous. We are talking to the founder and the director of Building Better Men, uh, Otis Bellinger out of Detroit, Michigan, hitting us with some great nuggets on the Next Level Living Show. So definitely, I want you to go and click on those Facebook buttons, click on those Twitter buttons and the LinkedIn buttons and let somebody else know that we are helping empower the youth this evening on the Next Level Living Show. So Otis, you wrote this incredible book, this No Reason Why You Can't Win, Seven Steps to Promote the Success of Young African-American Males. What, what made you decide to focus on the young African-American males with this book? Well, basically, people kept asking me, how did you so-called make it? How did you go through what you've went through? And... Our, and you're not out your mind. You're not in prison. You're able to go to college. You're able to have a family. And so I just thought about what is it, some steps that, that I've seen that have worked based on my experiences, based on my research. And it's just like we have to promote the success. We have to change the narrative of black males. And what it is we've done is that we get such a bad rap in the media. We get such a bad rap even by some of our own people. And I know we've heard men are dogs, but a lot of time they're talking about black men. They don't say right. white men. So, so, so the piece is, is that what can we do to promote success? Because they promote everything else. So in this book, The No Reason Why You Can't Win, you know, 
There is really no reason why you can't win. All you got to do is change your mindset. You got to just get up and say, you know what? I'm tired of the losses. And I'm going to tell you, once you have lost so much, it's either one or two things you're going to do. You're going to keep losing or you're going to say, you know what? I've got to turn this around. And mm. that's what we talk about. Mm. And, you know, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy read and it's a book that once you start reading it, you really can't put it down until you're finished with it. And there's seven steps that you talk about. But what we want to do is we want the people who are watching the show to go get the book. So we're not going to talk about all of them tonight. We're going to hit you with just a couple of the tenets in the book, a couple of the positive, mind-blowing steps that Otis suggests to help you promote success instead of uh, being wallowing in the pain. And, and one of the one things that he talks about is the very first chapter where he talks about recognizing your purpose. And, and, and what I like about it, Otis, and we want you to explain, expound upon it a little bit more, is that you say that everyone, not just somebody, not just one somebody, not just Judy, not just Billy, but everybody has a purpose. And I like to call it a God-given assignment. So touch upon that a, a little bit, that everybody has a purpose. You know, I believe that God has given some folk uh, skills and talents. Uh, that's why you have athletes and you have other folks. And uh, it only could be one president, one CEO. But, you know, at some point, we got to have a mental aha moment with ourselves. And that moment being where we say, you know what? Why am I doing this? Why am I here? What is it that, am I important or am I significant? If I'm important, that is selfish because that means I'm important to myself. But if I'm significant, that means that I'm adding value to others. So I believe ultimately our purpose is to add value to others while we're also adding value to ourselves. I love it. And you know, especially talking to some of the youth just going back on my experience, some of them really never had that explained to them the way you just explained to them. No one has really taken the time to sit down and say to that young brother uh, in the street, that young brother who's, uh, whose mother might be uh, uh, doing drugs and her his daddy he's never met. No one has taken the time to say to that young brother that you matter and that you have a purpose and your purpose is greater than anything that you've had to go through up to this point. So, so I'm I'm glad you 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 write about that in your book, and you also talk about that specifically black men, they were meant to be leaders, not not just existing. They were meant to be leaders. What do you mean by that? Well, we have a long history, and and you know, there as a leader in all of us. Just think of this, in Chicago. There was maybe 20 boys in a classroom, okay? But it was one of them by the name of Barack Obama. Right. So do you actually think, see, you know, just to give you kind of a hint, because my next book is called Success is in the Waiting Room. And the, mm. piece, and the piece is this. Did his success was in the waiting room and folks didn't know it. And see, a lot of folks' success is in the waiting room. You just got to get to the room. And see, the piece is, is that black boys are powerful. Black and, and what's behind black boys are praying mothers, praying grandmothers. God, I mean, you got some entities that, you know, that can put you into a level of greatness and a lot of us don't know the only reason we don't know we're great is because somebody didn't tell us that's it but see what it is is that a lot of our black boys are not having role models that they can trust if you got a role model that you can't trust no if you got an adult that you can't trust telling you you can be great 
you don't trust those words. But if you got a, a role model that you trust, that have shown you that they want the best for you, and they're telling you that you're great, because people will say, Bellinger, how do you get through to these boys when they own mamas and uncles and cousins? Nothing against their relatives, but what it was, the fact that they trusted me, the fact that I showed them that I loved them, the fact that I showed them that I cared for them, the fact that I did not put them in danger, the fact that I did not judge them when they didn't have the best clothes on. I did not judge them when they slurred. And what it is, we judge our young folk too much and we got to peel the layers back and underneath those layers is diamonds and we just got to figure it out so basically as adults we got to have patience and, and see we act like nobody had patience with us <laughs> yeah speak you know, on it speak on it <laughs> yeah you know we act like we just popped up and just had that job some of us was a hot mess. Come on now. Some of us was in our wilderness. So don't act like these, come on now. Don't act like these kids didn't go through the same thing we went through. We can't get brand new when we kicking it with these kids, man. We got to meet them where they at and then take them somewhere they need to go. Right. And you know, the adage that says you can't be what you can't see. I submit to you that they you're also getting through to them because they see you. Right. Many, many times they don't see the, the black man with the with the suit on unless they're going to a funeral. Right. Many times they don't see the, the, the well groomed brother unless he's laying flat in a casket. Right. Other than that, those are their own experiences. So the fact that you are a living, breathing testament of what purpose is all about, the fact that you wear your purpose on your sleeve every time you walk into the facility, every time you sit down in front of those young boys, you are wearing your purpose on your shoulders, you're wearing it on your face, you're wearing it in your walk, and you are wearing it in your talk. So that's how they're able to relate to you. That's what I see. And I haven't even met you in person yet over the time that we've been together. So I'm giving you your accolades, but I'm also bringing, bringing home your point that in order for these young men and young women for that fact to, to recognize that they have to have a purpose, they first have to know what a purpose is all about. And they secondly have to know that there is more than the right now. They have to see that there is more than just what their circumstances and what their situation is right now. And so we're going to move into the second part. The second thing that stood out in me in your book, No Reason Why You Can't Win, is after you recognize you have a purpose, you can no longer accept any crutches. I love that. I love that. What did you mean by accept no crutches, Bellinger? Man. Man, you get ready to get me kicked off your show. You know? <laughs> listen. Well, I know I, the producer. <laughs> okay, I got you. I got you. My man, you know what? I love our sisters. They do the best they can. Black women are the most precious being on earth, and they go through more drama and mess than most beings. And, you know, they are unfairly left with children. They are unfairly, I mean, we got all type of dynamics. You know that. I don't have to tell you that. Yeah, yeah, community. yeah. So, but what happened is this. They're doing the best they can, but, but they begin to overcompensate for the fact that the father is not there. As opposed to putting energy into getting that young man help, as opposed to putting energy into getting that young man a proper counseling as opposed to putting energy and to putting them in a viable mentoring program that will help them or finding and identifying an adult member of their family to help, they began to say, you know what? We about to go to the mall. I know that you're getting all F's in school, but I'm getting ready to buy you these Jordans. I know that you're disrespectful, but I'm getting ready to buy you these true religion. I know that you might kind of bat your eye or whatever, but I'm getting ready. And so what it is, we create an atmosphere of something for nothing. So so, so what happens is the mother have good intentions, but it's like, I got to make up for the fact 
that this man is not here. So what happens is this. They began to make excuses for that kid as to why he is the way he is. And then they begin, they go to school. Well, little Johnny does this, this, this. Well, no, little Johnny don't. See, the parent know little Johnny got some issues with their denial. Little Johnny may need an individualized education plan to put him or, or to get him some special help in school. No, he don't. So what happens is this. There is one place, Brother Leffridge, that that parent cannot jump up and go, not my baby, or make an excuse, and that is the courtroom. Mm -hmm. So if they, and so what happened, the kid has begun, began, or the young man has, the kid grown to a young man has been accustomed to that crutch. So what happens? They want the world to give them that crutch. They want the teachers to give them that crutch. They want the community to give them that crutch. And then if they create a space where they are now into the penal system. And when that judge go, here is the verdict, two to 10 or what have you, and the mama jump up, because they're conditioned. If you look at a lot of these young men, once they get their sentence, the first person they look back at is mama. Mama. Can you save me? Where is the crutch? And at that point, you know what the judge is saying? We're accepting no crutches today, young man. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And and I love how you uh you talked about DC's story in the book, and and I want you to just touch on DC's story because DC's story is a little different. DC's story is a story of overcoming the crutch. So talk talk to the people about DC's story. Well, DC was a young man I met when he was in the seventh grade. Uh, at a school called Servany in Detroit. That's no longer there. It's not John R. King. He played basketball for me. And he was special, man. God was definitely in his life. Uh, uh, just to give you a synopsis, I would take him home every day for about two, three years. I did not know that he was living in a house that had no running water, no running heat. And um, he had to go across to a, a uh, chief's uh, car wash to wash up. He had to run courts all through. I mean, the kid just was an overcomer, never asked me for nothing, had good grades. He quit the team. And uh, I thought it was something wrong with me, but when it came down to it, he quit the team because the same time that we had practice was the biggest crack selling hours for his neighborhood. So he wanted to be at home on the porch locking his mother in the house and stopping the dope dealers from selling his mother crack. This kid now is doing well. And it's just that everybody can't be like that. He, he had just some special anointing on his, on his spirit because for every DC, there's someone else that I could tell you who have been murdered in prison. So, you know, a lot of our young men are overcomers. And I often speak to Judge Greg Mathis from time to time. I mean, he spent time in jail and he did a lot of different things. So, I mean, we have to tell more stories like Judge Greg Mathis. We have to tell more stories like yourself and other young men. So, and DC story. Yes, yes, indeed. You know, and we've got to we've got to dispel that sense of entitlement that that our young people have today. And and because of that entitlement, they 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 create these these uh, virtual crutches in their life each and every day, because the exception turns into the entitlement. The exception is that you don't have a father in the house. The entitlement turns into because I don't have a father in the house, then mama, you need to give me all these things that my daddy would have gave me if he had been here. Right. The expectation changes. The expectation turns into an entitlement. And as you get older, that entitlement doesn't go away. That en entitlement gets bigger uh, from I'm entitled to this pack of chewing gum, this big red. Till I'm entitled to this big red car, till I'm entitled to not having to work and having you take care of me because that's what I've been entitled to all my life. 
but it takes right. it takes men like you and I, Otis, to show them that there's no crutches anymore. I didn't have a, I didn't grow up with a father either, but I didn't stop because I didn't have a father. I found a way to overcome. You didn't have a father in your life, but that didn't stop you. You decided that you would work some things out on your own. You'd find your own purpose at a young age and that you would overcome. And then you would also give back after you overcome. More right. stories of the overcoming and the giving back is necessary from our generation so that we can help that generation recognize that just because you had some things that you were going to have to overcome doesn't mean you are entitled to anything. The world doesn't right. owe you a dime. Nothing. Nothing. It doesn't. <laughs> That's the old Yorty thing. And I like how you how you wrote in the chapter to uh, th that people, young men, youth have to understand that they can make it in spite of That's right. their obstacles and that just recognizing that their trials and their tribulations are a temporary condition. What do you what did you mean by that? You know, what going back to your your successes in the waiting room. Uh, you know, we we have to let them know that there are some things you have to go through in order to become successful. Not many people just had an easy road. I don't know about you, brother Leftwich, but I don't have no easy road. <laughs> uh, My road was full of potholes. Right, right. So, so the thing about it is that you know, going back to the uh, donkey and that was fell into a hole and all these other donkeys was looking at him and telling him that you're in the hole uh, and you probably can't get out the hole and you'll probably be a failure. Now that sounds familiar to a lot of us, mm -hmm. but, they, but they kept kicking dirt at him and you know what eventually happened? He got out the hole because <laughs> yeah. they made it. So, so, so the thing about it is, when people think that they are taking something away from you, they really give it to you. And, mm. you know, and so when people think they are taking gas out of you, they're really filling you up. So, I mean, we just got to let our young folks know that this is a period for a short while. It's not the rest of your life. I mean, I mean, you 14, 15, having some what you call teenage drama. I mean, you got a lot of more living to do. You just got to find your blueprint. Oh, yeah. And just like any blueprint, that blueprint is a map to you getting to the end, getting to the destination. Right. And, and right. you said something You said something earlier in the conversation. When you were 12, you found your purpose, but that didn't stop all your trials and your tribulations. Oh, no, 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 no it didn't. And somebody, somebody greater than me coined the phrase that without a test, there is no testimony. And oh, what, no doubt. what we have to realize and what we have to share with the youth each and every day is that in order for you to find your purpose, walk in your purpose and live your purpose, you're going to have to go through some things so that you can testify while That's you're right. walking in your purpose. You can't fulfill your purpose if you haven't learned what your wow. purpose is and how to actually fulfill your purpose, right? That's right, Otis? Hey, no doubt. That's the, that's for real. That's real talk. That's real talk. Yes, indeed. So not only did you say that you got to recognize your purpose, accept no crutches, but then finally you, you bring the book home by saying that you have to see your success. What did you mean by seeing your success, Otis? Well, you know, in the Building Better Men program, we started out by saying, uh, go, if it's in the morning, good morning. My name is Otis Bellinger. I attend such and such school. I am a future doctor or, or whatever you want to be. If you say sports, we always tell them to have a secondary plan because everybody can't do sports. The Lord may have a different avenue for you. So the thing about it is that even right now, we have to stop saying, teaching our young folks to say, when I grow up, I want to be, no, you got to be that young doctor at age 10. 
Okay. At age 12. At age 14. So, and then adults need to put you in the company of those who you want to be like and also make sure that your educational track is leading toward that. You can't shy away from the maths and the sciences. I mean, things that play a part and you achieving those goals, you got to do it. You can't say you want to be an accountant and drop accounting five times. Right. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. So, you know, yeah. yeah I mean, you got to see it. Then you, And then you see it, then you be it. And then I, and then I, I have a phrase, you see it, you assess, then you be the success, and then you we the success. We meaning, then you go, and after you've got it, you create a we atmosphere. So you go back and grab a young man and do the same thing, create a, 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 a circle of what was done to you. So it's C, B, and we. Right. You know, it's, it's just like doing your laundry. You got to wash, rinse, and then repeat. You right. got, to, got to clean yourself up. You got to rinse yourself off so that you can clearly see your purpose and walk, walk in your purpose. Then you got to repeat that for somebody else. You know, I, when I was growing up uh, in gra uh, eighth grade and into high school, I, I was part of this organization here in um, Chicago called Link Unlimited. And again, I didn't have a father in my life, but Link Unlimited came along at a time where they peered uh, young men and women with business leaders in right. the so that they could again have that vision of what their possibilities were so right. i was able to see people each and every day doing things that i didn't even know existed much That's less right. things that i could envision in myself being right. able to do myself and out of that program I, I i learned this one phrase and if i never teach anybody anything else it's this phrase if i give you a fish you'll eat for a day that's right i teach you to fish you'll eat for a lifetime that's and, right. and that is what we're talking about by showing people their success that's what we are showing you the possibilities we're not just giving you something because if you if i give you something it has no value to you. But if I show you your possibilities and show you what it's going to take to reach those possibilities and give you the tools to be able to reach those possibilities, then once you get to that point, that's right. You can appreciate not only getting to that point, but you can appreciate the journey that you took along the way. That's right. I love it. I I I love I love that you say that there is no is no reason why anybody not just the youth uh, uh, young adults uh, older adults uh, people are stuck in a dead-end job people who don't know what their purpose in life is yet there's no reason why you can't win is, no, is that what you're telling us? no reason no reason <laughs> it's too much out here it's too mm. much out here man you mm. know what listen I tell folks all the time, I might not be the smartest, but you're going to have a heck of a time beating me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because your smartness and your intelligence or whatever you think you got, it's going to have to match my intensity level. And nine out of 10 times, it's not going to, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, you're not going to match my intensity. You're right. You may be able to outrun me, but you're never going to be able to outwork me. Nah. I love it. I love it. And, nah. you know, that's why, uh, Otis, you and I are aligned together because your book, No Reason Why You Can't Win, runs along a similar track of me and my book, You Are Unstoppable. And I think those two have to come together. When you recognize that you have everything inside of you and that there's no reason why you can't win, you become unstoppable. So that when those trials come your way, hey, trials, I knew you were coming in the first place. You can't stop me. When those tribulations knock on your door, hey, tribulation, I expected you to come by. You can't stop me either. And hey, as, 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 as quiet as it may be kept, when success comes by, 
to stop you because success will stop you in your tracks as well. No question. You know what? Success, I knew you were coming by and you're not going to stop me either because I have a purpose and Otis told me I can't accept any more crutches and he told me that if I see my success before my success comes, then I'm going to be unstoppable. That's what you're telling the people, right, Otis? Oh, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> so I'm tell them how can they get a copy of their book so that they can see the other steps on how to know that there's no reason why they can't win. So we told them three. How can they find out the other four? Okay. You can actually go to our website, buildingbettermen.org. One word, buildingbettermen.org. And you can go to our store. You can buy Building Better Men t-shirts, bags, uh, the book. And, um, hey, you know, Dick Gregory has endorsed it. Uh, Nolan uh, uh, from um, TV One have, have endorsed Roland it. Roland Martin. Uh, Roland Martin. I mean, the book has been, been, been selling. A lot of school districts have bought them in bulk. So, um, and I made it an easy read. Uh, so, hey, man, hey, check it out. So go to buildingbettermen.org and you can get your, not only the copy of the book, but you can also get some apparel so that you can walk around and be a walking testimony for somebody else to recognize that there's no reason why they can't win just as well. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, so brother Otis, what else is going on with building better men in the next couple of months that you think our audience should know about? Well, uh, personally, I'm on a dream tour. It started in October in LA and then it went to, uh, Atlanta and, um, I'm getting ready to go to Memphis and I'll be in Toronto in May. I got about six other destinations. And basically what I'm doing, I'm going from city to city and I'm teaching young people how to dream to let them know to put more emphasis on their inner than their outer and to and to actually let them know that again, despite any social economic level that it's possible for you to be successful. And then on June 3rd, and fourth, we're having our annual Building Better Men conference, but this year we're giving it a different span. On June 3rd, we're going to have for about 400 males uh, in grades 3rd through the 12th, we're going to have an all-day conference. And then on the next day, on the 4th, at a local university, Wayne State University, we're going to have their parents. We're going to have about 1,000 parents for a Building Better Relationship Summit. So. We just keep pushing, man. Oh, that is powerful. And where can they get more information about the dream tour that Otis you're doing and as well as the annual conference that you're having in uh, Detroit in June? Well, again, our uh, website, buildingbetterman.org. I'm also on Facebook under my name, Otis, O-D-I-S-B-E-L-L-I-N-G-E-R. And also Building Better Man has a, uh, has a fan page. Excellent. And let's not forget that Otis is burning up Periscope each and every morning, five days a week. You can catch him and get your two minutes of motivation with Otis Bellinger on Periscope. What's, what's, your, what's your name that they can check you out on Periscope? It is Greatness and You. Greatness and as a Nancy, you as an uncle. Actually, I'm getting ready to get on Periscope when I leave here to talk about uh, issues affecting single mothers and fatherlessness. Oh, wow, that is fabulous. So definitely on Periscope, look for Otis and on Greatness in You, Greatness, the letter N, U, on Periscope. Check him out uh, right after this broadcast, and you can check him out each and every morning where he gives his, uh, his motivational start for your day. Otis, brother, man, I thank you so much for your friendship. I thank you so much for your your counsel from afar and your counsel in our conversations together. You are doing great things to live your life on the next level. And more importantly, you are doing great things to help other people live their life on the next level. So I appreciate you. I honor you for that. And I thank you for what you do. But you have the last word tonight. What do you want to leave with our audience tonight? 
uh, Brother Leftwich, I just want you uh, to know that I'm very humbled by your invitation. Uh, I like your unstoppable movement that you're doing in Chicago. I definitely got to get to Chicago and got to get you up to Detroit. And, you know, I want your audience to know that you're a hardworking man. I mean, that you have – you. I mean, you're traveling the country, you're, you're putting things down, and also you're a part of Man of Vision, and you yeah. guys have something coming up in April, right? Yes, and we definitely hope you can get back down to uh, Atlanta to be a part of it. The Men of Vision, we are doing the Power Life Atlanta Conference, April 30th, down in Atlanta at the Cobb County Center, uh, Cobb County Galleria in the Atlanta area. So you can go to menofvisiontour.com to get that information. And just like uh, Brother Otis is doing the Dream Tour, we are doing the Men of Vision Tour. We're gonna to take it across the country in 2016 so that we can show other men the power of collaboration, knowing that men can go fast, go farther faster through collaboration than through competition. So we definitely are looking to bring it to a city near you. Otis, I definitely want you to uh, come on down to Chicago when we have it here in Chicago. We're looking at having it in August and you know, hopefully we can bring it up to Detroit and keep moving oh, it across no the country as we can make this happen because I, I love collaborating with other men of vision who not just have their vision, but who are implementing their vision. Because it's one thing I know, a, a, a vision without action remains a dream. And you're not, dream, you're not dreaming, you are a man of action. You are a man of vision. I appreciate you, brother. All right, so if they wanna have a, a deeper conversation with you, uh, is there an email where they can reach out to you or is it just going to the website, uh, buildingbettermen.org? Oh, they can reach me by email, Otis, O-D-I-S, at buildingbettermen.org. All righty, so thank you so much, Otis. Otis Bellinger, buildingbettermen.org, doing great things up in Detroit, Michigan, and across the country, and coming to a city near you with the Dream Tour. Well, that's, that's our show tonight, family. I told you it was gonna be a powerful, uplifting show. I told you that Otis was the man, and Otis, he's just letting you know that there is no reason why you can't win. And so my unstoppable thought as we do each and every episode at the end of the show is to let you know that like Otis said, every one of you have a purpose. Don't be stopped by the crutches in your life from fulfilling your purpose. And the one way that you can stop those crutches from stopping you is to see your vision. That's right. right. Start right now. What is your vision? What is your vision of success? And recognize that success doesn't have to be making all the money in the world. Success could be just changing the life of one other person right now. There's no reason why you can't win. And if you know there's no reason why you can't win, then you have everything you need. That's right. Stoppable. That's my unstoppable thought of the week. This has been a great show. Thank you again, Otis Bellinger. And to you guys, my listening audience, come back each and every week to the Next Level Living Show with Coach Terrence, where we talk to ordinary people doing extraordinary things to live their life on the next level. And as in parting, I want you to dream big, aim high, and believe in the impossible, and never, ever settle for less when you can be unstoppable. Don't just make it a great week, make it an unstoppable week. And here's to living your life on the next level. Take care, family. <laughs>